This is episode 95 of our Road to Unicum, and by popular demand, I review the Italian medium line. We're going to take a look first at the P44 Pantera. This is the tier 8 medium tank, and it is the first tank in this particular tech tree that has the auto reloader gun. Now, if you haven't played an auto reloader, it basically marries some of the best characteristics of a regular single shot gun where each shell can load independently as well as having the ability to fire off multiple shells in a clip in rapid succession. And so the way the auto reloader works is that the more shells you have in the clip, the faster the remaining shells will load. And so to some degree, you know, if you're going to dump all three shells just as you can with an auto loader, you're going to be penalized by having the slower reload to refill your clip. But in a lot of cases, you know, due to the amount of time that a target's going to be exposed or based on its hit points, it's totally worth dumping your clip. Okay, so this is the new Kharkov map, obviously an all tier 8 battle. We're also going to look at a very close come from behind victory with uh, an all tier 8 live oaks. And then notice as I came up to this particular position out in the field, I was careful to come behind the ridge lines and hills. And then when I do come and expose or come to the top of the ridge line there, I stay behind the bushes and that will make sure that I'm, it'll minimize the probability that I'll get spotted. And I'm doing a little gardening here. I can do this early now because they're not close enough and I'm going to try to use those bushes later. But I need to be careful here and assume that you know I'm going to get spotted. And obviously since I'm one of our forward tanks along with this M41, you know, I'll be prioritized as a target. And then since I've been lit, I'm going to go ahead and reposition here a little bit, circle back around counterclockwise and then move into the bush. Now. A couple things about the new Kharkov map. The biggest issue with the old Kharkov map was simply the map was too small. The new map, this one, is much larger in terms of size and there are different areas of the map that you can play. Our team is making a very big tactical mistake. We've got tanks that are pushing down along the north-south trench on the six lane. And the way that trench works is once you enter it, you can only exit it around the EF lanes to go west. Uh, or only if you reach the very end of the trench on the north or south side can you, you then either uh, move into the city. So you can only move to the enter the city over where the respective um, base caps are. And I, for that reason, for any number of reasons, I, I think going in the six lane really doesn't make a lot of sense. And so our three tanks that are push, pushing down the six lane earlier are going to essentially self flank because they're going to be susceptible to fire not just from the enemy tanks down by J3, those snipers, as well as you can see some of their heavies are flexing back in the south part of the city to go ahead and shoot at our KV-5, Alpine Tiger, and Centurion. Now, our M41 is doing a great job. He is underneath the hill, and so the their WZ tank destroyer, in order to fire at the M41, had to come up and overexpose himself on the ridge, and I was able to put two good shells in him, or already splashed him, that WZ is now one-shottable. I also put in a couple shells on that Indian Panzer to help soften him up. And I really like what our M41 did. He took a very smart calculated risk to moving up. I want to get in a position here to apply some fire on this FCM. I am lit. I'm not sure. It might be the FCM, which I think for heavy has pretty decent view range. But regardless, once we've taken him out, now we've cleared out the field area, which is great. One mistake, I haven't played any heavies in this map. If I am in a heavy, I would stay in the 890 lanes. I would not stay anywhere near the 7 lane or on the western side of the 8 lane for the reason you're about to see here, like this Chrysler K. He knows he's lit because he's fa facing a pair of Chrysler Ks on my team, but the problem is is that he has no way of knowing that I'm going to be shooting at him, right? It's different if I spotted the Chrysler K and he was unspotted, then he would know, oh, I just drove out from behind a building. Maybe I should pull back because someone's going to shoot me, the guy who spotted me. But in that case, you get that element of surprise because he's not necessarily aware that I'm there. Obviously, if he's reading the map and he realizes they've lost the areas west of the six lane, then he would be thinking about this. Now, their VK had flexed back toward their base. I'm not firing yet until I could put some bushes in between us with the hope that when I fire, maybe I won't get spotted. But notice immediately his reaction. His turret starts to turn toward me, not just generally, but with great specificity, right? And so a lot of times you don't want to wait until the sixth sense indicator pops. If someone is looking at you with specificity, you know, in that time, the three-second gap for sixth sense, 
uh, pops, you should assume that you are spotted and behave accordingly. So I'm getting plenty of flanking shots on these tanks. That one didn't land. Still totally worth taking. Okay, and then I'm going to get lit here in a moment by their Chrysler K. And so part of the problem, obviously, I'm exposed. He can shoot me. He doesn't have very good gun depression. I go ahead and snapshot that first shot. You can argue, like, there's a debate, like, with this particular tank's auto reloader, same thing, same gun as the, with the Progetto, the Tier 8 Premium, except the pre the Tier 8 Progetto has an intra-clip reload of two seconds versus the P44 is two and a half seconds. It's interesting, I know universally the Progetto is better regarded than the P44 Pantera. I actually have done much better in the P44. Now, it might be because I inherited my Progetto's crew, which was already crewed out better. Uh, but there are a couple things that I noticed about the P44 that it has better than the Progetto. The first is that the top speed is five kilometers an hour higher, which is meaningful. And then the second thing is that the I like the armor on the P44 Pantera better. The whole armor is stronger, so you will get some troll balances. And then the turret on the P44, the sides, are super angled. They're basically auto bounds, right? So um, the Progetto has one extra degree of gun depression. This tank has eight degrees of gun depression, which is excellent. It's very workable. It's not obviously not as good as nine or especially 10 or more degrees of gun depression, which is amazing for ridge finding, but it's, it's plenty good enough that you don't have to overexpose your tank. Right, now, you might be wondering, why did I flex back toward this base? So a couple things, like the their VK was at full health. And, you know, I don't want to force myself into a situation. Like, frontally speaking, the only way I'm going to pen that VK reliably is if I hit him in the lower front glacis and it's fairly straightforward to me, or if I hit him in the his cupola, right? But those are not easy high percentage shots to make, whereas he can aim for the most part anywhere and have a very good likelihood of penetrating me. All right, so again, as I come up around the ridge, you know, make sure to pull up into a bush here. So I'm going to get the first shot advantage. Now, our Scorpion has been sitting here the whole game. That's Up to this point, that's been okay. Now, the one really important thing that our TS-5 did is he kept up with the pace of the battle. Like a while ago, after we killed the Indian Panzer, the TS-5 moved all the way to the south. That was such a smart move on his play. Uh, part for a couple of reasons. One, he's got a very good armor profile being a an assault TD. And then the other thing is because he's slow, if he's not proactive about keeping up with the front line, the pace of the battle, he's not going to be able to use his gun. And the TS-5 did an amazing thing. He managed to hold off and finish off the weakened Chrysler as well as he outbrawled the VK. Now I came back to the base for the simple reason that I wanted to help spot that WZ coming in because once he gets close enough if he's able to spot us then it's going to create problems because then their heavies will know where we are and they can shoot at us. The other thing I was kind of concerned about is that they might push toward the cap which their VK, remember earlier the VK was spotted in the gap I think somewhere around like the B7 area and then right here is a mistake on my part. Now from where I was I could have potentially penetrated that the M6, I think it's called the Mutant, if I hit him through the drive wheel. But that's a pretty precise shot to make from this distance, right? And so the most important thing is to come up and take out this VK, and I missed the first shot on the VK, which sucked, but I made sure the third shot on the clip to go ahead and track him, right? And then, thankfully, the reload on this tank for an auto-reloader is not too punishing, right? And I would say, actually, I didn't realize how good the reload times on the P44 Pantera were until I played the standard B where the reload times are super long if you've got zero or one shells in the clip and it's really punishing um, if you are not careful about when you choose to dump two or three shells at a time. Okay, so our Scorpion G just got shot, right, which means that they know where he is and he's not moving, right? That's bad because their M6 is in a position where he can shoot the Scorpion G, and so you don't want to be too predictable. I know that the Scorpion G is probably thinking, is, oh, I just if I just wait here, I'll get a shot on that WZ, but he's not playing smart in terms of managing his hit points, right? And the thing, too, is like, if you're what you should watch how your opponents tend to move, whether or not they tend to move after they're spotted, whether or not they tend to move after they've been shot at, because and, and whether or not they go back to the same sp place where they were, where they were previously spotted, because this tells you a lot about their mindset and it gives you 
the potential to just blind fire and take out your, their the opponents, right? So I'm staying notice on the westerly side of these ridges. I don't want to get spotted by the WZ since he's close. So I'm going to do just a touch of guarding here, knock over this tree, and then set up for the first shot advantage. If I can spot this P44, which I do, and then I land another two shots on him before he's able to scoop behind the building. So this is great. I've actually hit that Pantera four times and he's totally one shottable. And now I'm going to actually get into a position where I can take him out or spot the WZ. So our RD finishes off the P44. And that's why like at a map like this, you know, like earlier I was talking to our M40, M43 RD to get him to uh, move to the west, right? Because they're, he they're heavy swan city. And thankfully he was already starting to move even before I said anything. Right, but you know, by keeping that already alive, he's able to pick off their tanks, and they're in a tough position, really, because we have control of anything from the six line over. We should, because we have the better vision mechanics and we have the better mobility. Right, uh, matter of fact, this makes it tough in a situation where their heavies win city, like they did, uh, but their the mediums and TDs and lights lose the western half of the map. You want to be careful about crossing these, this open ground like I'm doing. I'm doing it only because our TS-5 and Scorpion are positions like there. The WZ spotted. He's trying to exit out of the six-lane trench. The six-lane trench, by the way, in my opinion, is largely useless. You know, our three tanks, our KV-5, Alpine Tiger, and Centurion that move down the six-lane, they can't exit that trench except in the middle of the map or the very north or southern areas of the map, which makes it a funnel. Funnels are terrible to go into, especially since they tried to exit out of the south side of the funnel and they got pinched in between fire from city and from the western side of the map. You never want to do that. Uh, and moreover, like that six lane trench, you can't access city unless you're all the way in the far north or far south part of the city. If I'm in a heavy tank, I'm going to go into the city and stay on the 890 lanes and I'm not going to expose myself on the western side of the map like their Chrysler did that I killed their P-44 Pantera, who I shot twice while he was in the western side of the city, or their M6A2E1 Mutant. And right there is one of the things that you can do as an advantage for an auto-loader, auto-reloader, is if you know that an opponent is one-shottable, you can snapshot the first shot because you'll have a kill shot lined up, in this case, two and a half seconds later when the intro clip reload finishes. So the Karkov, new Kharkov map, I think so far, excellent map, allows for all kinds of gameplay, flanking, vision, sniping, lots of brawling in the city, very fun. Okay, this is another tier 8 match, we are in Live Oaks, and this is the kind of map where there tends to be a lot of passive play by tanks that are hoping to snipe. So from this side, players will either go sit over in D8, over by the building and the adjacent bushes, or over by the C6, C7 areas, and then in the mirror positions on the other side of the map, over by G4, there's a house with two bushes on either side, um, or on the sniper's hill over by E3. Right? But in either case, that's being too passive. You're basically just waiting for someone to drive into your field of fire. And so what we're going to do, Waffle did the right thing, just pausing the bush, see if he could spot anything, then we're going to move up here. And a lot of times, if you've got enough tanks and you can get into the river here, this will allow your, your team to have a positional advantage. You'll see me work this in a little bit. Now, the main thing I need to be careful of, a lot of times when you come here, the enemies may have a sniper or two over by the k4 k5 area and if they're there a lot of times they'll get the first shot advantage because if you're spotted on this ridge when you peek up they'll be able to shoot you pretty easily what's really nice is you can see our bc 12t he's all the way down over by k0 so he's putting flanking fire on these two heavies that were kind of trying to come around the corner right actually don't see any numbers that are popping up from the Batchat 12T, but he's in a position where he could be doing that, right? And right now our tanks are out brawling theirs. You might be wondering why I'm not pushing up to this bush directly in front of me. The problem is, is that I'm getting continually proxy lit by the Centurion 5-1. And so there, because I could tell he was looking to my left, I was able to punch him through the side of his turret, which in almost every tank is a pretty meaningful weak spot, right? And obviously on ridge fighting, the turret's always going to be exposed. And so I'm having to be patient here. Even though we were down by a two-tank deficit, I don't want to just come up and over and expose myself in a way that doesn't make sense. But I can see here, again, the 5-1, I know both the 5-1 and the Chrysler aren't looking at me. The 5-1 just fired, and right there, he just fired. And during his reload, that will give me plenty of time to go ahead 
and fire three consecutive shots to put him down. But to some extent, you've got to be a little patient here. Like this T-34, he can afford to be more aggressive. My friendly player coming up here because he's got the turret armor to do so. I don't really have meaningful turret armor. Uh, you know, you will... You know, you will bounce some shells off of the sides of the P-44 turret, like I talked about earlier, because they're angled. But if they shot, shoot you in the middle of the turret, even through the mantlet, I think the protection is somewhere in the range of about 165, 170 millimeters of armor, which isn't enough to protect a lot against most Tier 8 guns from medium CDs and heavy tanks. Now, there, you'll see, is giving away his location. You guys have heard me talk about this many times. He's only going to finish this cap... If we're a completely idiot team, and obviously we're not, our 12T is going back to spot him and you know, Waffly tripod in here to, to finish him off. What that ELC really should have done is to, he could have gone to A7 and been far enough that he could have applied full flanking fire on our Chrysler Ks or our Rheimatau Borsig to soften them up to enable them to win City faster, right? Okay, and at this point here, I'm trying to figure out where do we want to go, right? Uh, I'm not terribly enthused about going after the T-34, partly because he would require four shells for me to kill, and then partly because their Striv, if he's still around the area where he was last spotted, kind of on the western side of the swamp, he can shoot anything that crosses the gap over on the five lane underneath the bridge, right? And then that's how one of our platoon mates got picked off. We're down by three tanks here. They've still got their LT-432, which is a bit of a rough situation for us. And then their Striv S1 is a ninja, right? So I can't I have to assume that in any vision situation, I am going to get outspotted by that Striv. So we don't want to play the interior of the lake either. That's too risky, right? What I am doing here is some gardening. And you could definitely argue whether or not I overdo it. I end up knocking over like seven or eight trees. I probably could have stopped after knocking about three or four, that would have given me enough bushes to work from from the east side of the tracks. And part of the problem here is I got greedy trying to fire on the LT-432, and so because of this, it's taking me too long to exit this place, and I lose half of my hit points to those heavies that are exiting the east side of city. So I think knocking over a few trees would have been fine, and then I should have pivoted back over to this side of this track in this bush, and that way I'd be double bushed. I have the bushes that I'm in now as well as the bushes directly in front of me, now their Chrysler, because he's moving predictably along the A lane heading straight east, I will spot him, outspot him for sure if I'm sitting in these bushes, right? And then it'll give us an opportunity to put some flanking fire in him as he's approaching our cap. So here you can see as he exit the edge of that road, it flattens out and I'm able to put two shells into him plus one from Waffly Tripod and so we've taken off half of his health. So that's huge. Really the problem we need to get rid of here is this LT-432. He's got amazing mobility and camo. That was a really nice shot by RT-34. And our Batchat 12T right now, he's not in a relevant position. I mean, he would be relevantly positioned if they were pushing down along the K lane, but they're not. And then I took that snapshot thinking, hey, that's okay. Even if that doesn't miss, I've still got two more shots. That shot was off. And then this third shot really <laughs> should have penetrated. Like when I missed that, I was like, oh my gosh, I just threw away... Another 200 hit points. I was actually lucky not to get penetrated by their defender or their Striv S1. But, you know, this turret has a lot of angles to it. And so you will bounce shots. If I had died, for sure, we would have lost this battle. But thankfully, I'm still alive. And, you know, if you keep keep in mind earlier, right, I, I made a mistake earlier when I was trying to overgarden. That was not wise. And I tried to shoot the LT-432. I should have just run immediately. But... You know, in the initial brawling on this eastern side of the map, I didn't take any damage because I was really careful about managing my exposure and looking for opportunities where their Centurion 5-1 and their Chrysler were looking to my left. So I get side turret shots and I could pull back behind the ridge, you know, before they could do anything about it. And so their LT-432, you know, obviously I'm backing up into his field of fire, but that's a low alpha gun that he's firing against me. And I know if I put two shells in them, I can take him out. You know, their Rheinmetall Borsig is overexposing himself. He's sitting at the very highest position where he could be on that ridge. That's really not too smart. You know, it's funny. There's um, there's a game called Arma, and or Arma 2, and I think it's it was originally created as a military combat simulator. It's actually used by the military, but by a number of nations around the world. And one of the things that they talk about in that game, like, 
I think Arma 2 has been used as the engine for building other games, but if you read some of the guides about Arma 2, they talk about doing, not doing what this defender does, which is ridge lining, right? Like you don't ever want to be driving on the top of a ridge, or if you're, you know, infantry, you don't want to be running along the top of the ridge because you're super visible and exposed from a great distance. Now really, all their heavies need to do would be to move up together with their TS-5, gradually stay under the ridges, and out brawl us. Just straight shots one for one, but that defender over trusted his armor, drove up on top of the ridge, and gave me those easy flanking shots so that we could put him down. Now this is pretty much a 50-50 situation. The only thing that I need to worry about is I've lost enough hit points that I'm one-shottable by any of their tanks that are remaining, and so I have to play like it. Waffly has done a good job conserving his hit points. Uh, there, our bad chat 12T has got to be careful too right now. He's just, I, I think he's He's just trying to work his gun in, which is good. I think he's kind of been a little bit too static in terms of his positioning. You know, he sat down over by K0, J0 too much. And I'm waiting for their tanks to see if they'll make the same mistake that their defender did, which is they'll come up and over the ridge. Because neither the TS-5 nor the Chrysler has particularly good gun depression. And then thankfully, Waffly takes out their TS-5. So now we can go we can go apply pressure to that Chrysler. Now what our bat chat 12T is going to do is super inadvisable. Right, like he's going on the interior of the lake. He is doing that against a tank, which is a ninja. And because the strip hasn't been spotted in a while, and because he didn't push to the south over by the K lane, we have to assume he's still in the swamp. And so that batch at 12T, he made some positional mistakes throughout this game. I mean, really, he was over sitting at K0 for a long time. But we've got a 2v1 situation against this Chrysler, and so what we what we need to do is basically have Waffly go in draw the attention and the fire of the Chrysler, and then I can peek safely and fire since the Chrysler won't be looking at me. People on the other side are worried about the clock. We've got over five minutes left. The game most likely is not going to be determined by the clock. There's plenty of time after we take out this Chrysler to go find the Striv S1, even if we go about it very cautiously, which we will, and I will explain. So I'm going to move behind this bush, and the Chrysler is backing up, so Waffly's going to go ahead and go in now. I actually hitched my step right here thinking I would have a shot. That was a mistake. I should just keep pushing because what Waffly's going to try to do is go around him and get to the north of that Chrysler, right? But then I take a shot here. That one misses. But then you know, he's on top of the tracks and Waffly takes him out. So I was a little bit too hesitant there. Notice I don't ridge line. I don't go up on top of the tracks after killing that after we kill that Chrysler because I know I'm still lit and that Striv S1 can kill me. I've seen this mistake so many times, like I'll, I'll sit in games and watch players after I die and what people often do is they'll kill something and they'll immediately expose themselves driving and then get shot at and killed and they get frustrated. <laughs> you know, like, what do you expect to happen if you're still lit and you go into an open area? Uh, but you notice here, like, we're going in a very broad counterclockwise loop around the map and we're doing this to try to locate the Striv and hopefully catch him unawares but we haven't been able to find him and so what that tells me is he's most likely still in the swamp area of the map the middle part of the map and so what I'm gonna do I'm cutting diagonally to the left and I'm gonna straighten out I'm aiming for that house right in front of me because this sniper position here over by G4 has bushes on either side of the house right And so this will give me an opportunity to kind of look through bushes and see if I can find him somewhere in the middle area of the swamp and then given that I don't spot him I actually start to tell my platoon mate, go ahead and get on cap. In order for us to cap it out in time, we both would need to get on cap, but he could get on, accumulate cap points. I can sit here to defend and then come to the cap before the last 10 seconds. But what happens with the Striv S1, if you're wondering, why did I wait to fire on him? Well, I know where he is, and the thing is, he knows I know where he is because he's been lit, right? And so I was waiting for him to try to move and, and make a mistake, and he did. You know, he got out of siege mode and started to move laterally from right to left, and at that point, that was an easy finish with me uh, because I've got that auto reloader. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing the lower tier 5, 6, and 7 of the Italian medium line. And I'm also going to be reviewing the standard B and then when I get to it, the Progetto 65. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.